as you're building up your ideas and vocabulary on the different categories of part two, people, place, activity, event, object, and favorite, you should be writing it all down in a notebook as I advised in an earlier video. These ideas and vocabulary should be coming from you and what you already know. Brainstorming and using words and ideas that you know well will help you speak more fluently without too many errors. But if you have plenty of time to prepare and practice, let's say over a month, then you can take ideas and vocabulary from places other than your own mind. The reason you need more time to use this approach is because you will be trying to use words which are unfamiliar and it will at first be quite difficult to use the new language in the right way. This approach, trying to find more ideas and vocabulary, can fit all topics you'll be asked to talk about, but some are easier to research than others. Imagine you're preparing to talk about a famous place you've never been to and you chose London. There will be plenty of content you can find on London which you can use to describe the place. On the other hand, if you're asked to talk about someone in your family and you choose your father, it may be harder to research, but not impossible. The internet is a good place to start your research. After you've come up with lots of your own ideas and vocabulary, just searching the word on Google can be effective as you will get plenty of websites on the topic you're looking to describe. However, there is a slight weakness to this as a lot of the vocabulary you will find will be written down and not spoken so you cannot guarantee the words will be appropriate when speaking. If you really want to find common spoken language on the topic you choose, then it's best to watch people speaking about that topic. A great way to do this is to use YouTube. There is so much content to choose from and you can be sure you'll find something useful you can use to describe your chosen topic. Let's look at an example of what we could do with the famous place topic we mentioned before. If we choose London and just search it on YouTube. So the second video that comes up is a travel guide to London made by the travel company Expedia. It's a short six minute video that is going to help us to visualize a place we've never been to and provide us with vocabulary we know is appropriate to talk about this subject as it's a native speaker describing the place to us. It's probably useful to have the English subtitle switched on when you're doing this. You may miss or be confused by the vocabulary you don't know if you can't see it. It's a vocabulary building exercise and not a listening one. Once you've got some new words from the video, try to guess the meaning of them from the context of the video and what the narrator is saying. Once you've had a guess, you could check the meaning by looking up the language. By doing this, you'll get loads of great idiomatic language that you can practice using. Some subjects you research will be easier than others, but you can use this approach with almost anything. If you're preparing to describe someone in your family and you choose your dad, obviously it's unlikely there'll be a video about your dad on YouTube, but there will be videos of other people talking about their dads, which you can take ideas and language from. You won't be able to take all the vocabulary because some might not apply to you, but you will get something. Let's take a look. If I search my dad on YouTube, we can see a video with the same title comes up. This video is a native English speaker talking about his father who had just died. A bit sad to listen to, but you get to listen to someone describing their father very well for over 10 minutes. 
you can firstly get ideas from the video that you can use to talk about your dad. And also you can take down any vocabulary that you think could apply to your dad and feelings towards him. This research is about building your ideas and vocabulary. You're not just copying. You have to take the ideas and vocabulary and make it your own by practicing and really knowing the language you're using. Give it a try. You'll be surprised how easy it is. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos.